Prayer by and hear me, and uh, let's all turn to Second Corinthians twelve twenty. Twelve twenty. Maybe read nineteen through twenty one. Okay. Second uh, Corinthians twelve nineteen through twenty one. And uh, and I'm sorry I ain't got copies of paperwork tonight for everybody, but maybe the church can run off some copies for Sunday to hand out or. They say fed. Uh, I think this is very important material to ground us in the faith of the King James and to defend the King James Bible and love it more than ever. And uh, let's read. Again, thank you that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying. For I fear at least when I come I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be bound unto you such as you would not. At least there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, and tumults. And at least when I come again my God will humble me among you, and that I shall be well many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanliness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, King, King, Lord, Lord, Savior and Friend, Almighty God, we just praise our holy name. Jehovah Jared, the great provider, Jehovah Rapha, the great healer, Jehovah Shalom. God is peace. We praise our holy name and thank you for the Holy Spirit and comfort. Leading God for all truth. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, shedding our precious blood. Dying in our place, saving our soul, washing us in the blood of the Lamb, and putting our Holy Spirit and Word in our hearts, leading God to all truth, Lord Jesus. Bless me tonight, Lord, as I declare the Word of truth and defense of the King James Bible compared to other translations, Lord, that are, are still in a lot of the truth of thy Word and spiritual uh, leading uh, and, and reaching souls for Christ, Lord. And uh, may it ground us in our faith and love of the King James more than ever, and appreciate it more than ever, and leading God, Holy Spirit, tonight we pray and bless and touch each heart, and may we each and every one listen closely and uh, weigh it out in your own heart, mind, soul. I think you'll see a whole lot of evidence here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. And... Uh, Y'all bear with me tonight. And, uh, uh, amen, bro. I think y'all find this very interesting. Uh, there's a great debate and questions of Bibles today. There's many translations today, many questions, which uh, one and uh, uh, references of John 1.1 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and uh, the 14th verse and the Word was manifest in the flesh and uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 just brief and it, it, it's backing up uh, the 14th verse that God was manifest in the flesh and so forth you can read it yourself and we'll try to skip through here a little bit of speed that you're familiar with in Hebrews 3.7 and uh, 15, uh, uh, I'll, I'll take you to Hebrews, the third chapter here, if you want to follow. And uh, 3, 7, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear His voice, in the 15th verse, while it is said today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. And 4, 7 backs the same concern readings here. And uh, I want to take you on to Hebrews 4.7. Uh, oh yeah, not 4.7, but 6.18 to 20. Okay, let's go to uh, Hebrews 6.18 to 20. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuse to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter into that within the veil, where the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And we go on to read here in Hebrews 7, 1-4, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, 
And Salem is short for Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, Jerusalem, that's going to be set down one day on uh, earth, amen? The new earth, amen? For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of the righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. And without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, a wife of priests continually. Now consider how great this man was, and to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And as we look at Isaiah 9, 6 that we're familiar with, uh, Melchizedek corresponds with these readings uh, 100%. For unto us a child is born, and to a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. And y'all try to uh, stay with me best you can because I've got a lot of material to cover here that I find uh, very important. Uh, turn right over to the 10th chapter of Hebrews and uh, starting with the 4th verse through the 25. And unless the Lord changes my heart, I feel like it's all important to just briefly remind our minds and hearts in Christ Jesus. And uh, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, note this verse very carefully. I come in the volume of the book that is written to me to do thy will, O God. And that's your Bible, the King James Version. Amen. More inspired of God than any translation uh, that's known on earth as far as I'm concerned. And uh, go on to read above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin. Thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For, boy, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof of the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And this is salvation unto your souls. And when he saves you, he puts the Holy Spirit and Word of God in your hearts to correspond with the Bible that he left us uh, a letter from heaven, from Jesus, amen, to compare and draw and mature in Christ Jesus, amen. And 17th verse, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another provoking to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, it's meant for all God's children 
to associate in church together and grow together and help one another. We learn from one another. Amen? And uh, we want to go on and look at uh, uh, we we want to pull our folder now and you pull your clip and we're going to look at the outside folder and the church if they see fit they can cut this folder in half and make two sheets to the Xerox better, okay? And we'll go over this chronology of Bible translation of history of, of Bibles through time, and uh, I think you'll find interesting as well. The following chronology includes events of major importance in the long and dramatic story of the Bible translation. The list is necessarily selected and places special emphasis on the background of the English Bible providing information basic to further study of a fascinating field. 1500 to 500 B.C., the Old Testament was put in two writing, and that's the, the original Bible of Hebrew, amen? The Septuagint a translation of the Old Testament to Greek, 250 to 100 B.C., according to the tradition by 72 Hebrew scholars, is complete in Alexander, Egypt. This version contains 40 five books, the Alexandra canon used by the early church and continues to be the Old Testament canon of the Latin and Greek church. So that's got more books in it than our Bibles uh, of knowledge today uh, is only 39 in the Old Testament. Uh, A.D. 52, 100, the New Testament is written, coming to us in Coney Greek, the common language of the time, although some portion may have been first set down a raiment, the language spoken by Christ. A.D. 100, formulation of Palestinian Canaan, a Hebrew Bible at Sanad of Jannia. 350 to 400, first tabulation of New Testament Canaan of 27 books, uh, and which was probably in Greek. And uh, about 400, Jerome completes his final translation of the Bible, the Latin Vulgate, based on the Septuagint, and translated from the Hebrew and other ancient versions. And uh, that would be a, a, a Catholic Bible, I think, wouldn't you? And uh, about 600 to 900, the Masoretic text in Hebrew is developed by the Masoretics, a school of Jewish textual critic. The Masoretic text used in the Jewish Bible has been an important reference in preparing translation into other languages. Now, note this now, in 1382, John Wycliffe completes his translation, the first complete Bible in English, okay? 1456, the Gutenberg Bible, a folio edition of the Latin Vulgate is printed from movable type, a postal event that inaugurated the era of printing, which is uh, another Catholic Bible. Uh, 1516, Erasmus completes his translation in Greek. 1522, Martin Luther translates the Bible into German. 1535, William Tyndall issues his English translation, which powerfully influenced all the English versions that followed. 1535, Miles Coverdale issues his translation dedicated to King Henry VIII. 1537, Coverdale's Bible becomes the first Bible to be printed in England. And some of you may want a copy of this sermon to take home until you get some paperwork on it. 1537, Matthew's Bible is produced based primarily on the Tyndall and Coverdale Bibles. 1539, Coverdale issues the Great Bible. It's essentially a combination of his own earlier work and Tyndall's Bible. This work was authorized by Henry VIII. 1560, note this, the Geneva Bible produced by Coverdale, William Whittingham, John Knox, and others in Geneva after Mary became queen. It is the first English Bible to divide the chapters into verses. So that's when verses started in the Bibles. 1582-1610, dual realms Catholic Bible appears, a direct translation to English from the Vulgate by the Catholic Church, the New Testament issued in 1582 at Rams, the Old Testament in 1609, 1610 at Duke, France. Uh, 
1611, the great King James, Amen. or authorized version completed by the group of learned men, all re-owned scholars appointed by King James. Yeah. Now, all these other Bibles, now some of the Catholic Bibles may be uh, still known, but uh, these others, we don't hear of them. They may be in other countries. I don't know. Uh, uh, 1885, the English Revised Version, produced by a group of English biblical scholars with contribution by a similar group of American scholars. 1901, the ASV, as we hear of, the American Standard Version issued by the American Committee that had worked on the English Revised Version. 1924, the Moffat Bible, a complete translation of the Bible to modern English by James Moffat. I never heard of it. It must be in England or Europe or whatever. 1931, Smith Goodspeed Bible, a modern speech translation combined the Old Testament prepared under the editorship of J.M. Powell Smith and the New Testament prepared by Edgar J. Goodspeed of the University of Chicago. Never heard of it. 1941, Confernity Version. New Testament revision was published under the sponsorship of physical confraternity of Christian doctrine. This edition represents a revision of the Dory Rams Challenger version based on the Latin vocate. Uh, scholars are now working on a complete translation of the Old Testament, part of which has already been published. And this is another Catholic Bible. 1945 to 1949 was a Knox version, complete Bible translated by Master Ronald A. Knox, based on Latin Vulgate, authorized by Catholic Heresy of England and Wales. 1952, here's the RSV, a revised standard version produced by a group of American scholars sponsored, notice this, sponsored by the National Council of Churches of Christ. Your Church of Christ that believes in baptism saves you is back in that Bible, so I, I don't think I'd want to read it, you know what I mean? It's probably influenced bad, huh? Uh, 1961, the New English Bible, a new translation by a group of British scholars appointed by a committee representing the Protestant churches of Great Britain and representatives of the Oxford and Cambridge University presses, okay? Now then, I want you to look at uh, your next sheet pick up here, the first one, Translation Bible Difference Example. King James Version Reference 1611, Revelation 2219. You can look in your Bible, uh, Revelation 2219, uh, if you ain't got a copy, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. The New King James Version uh, reads similarity and uh, no dispute as far as I'm concerned. All other translations change the words, believe it or not, the book of life to the tree of life, which is very wrong. They are very different. There's no way... You just think if they don't know the difference of them two, how can you trust their printing and writing of the Bible otherwise if they can't see the difference of those two? The tree of life was in the garden with Adam and Eve and to be in heaven to receive living everlasting in heaven with God and Jesus of 12 fruits, fruits to eat of, etc. The book of life only is held by God as of who accepts him in salvation, washed in the blood of Jesus. These translations all left it out. Uh, Jerusalem Bible Catholic, the Phillips Modern English, New English Bible, ESV, Living Bible, RSV, Amplified, NIV, New American Standard, and the Catholic Bible, New American Bible. And uh, so... And look at your next uh, three copies of Revelation 22, 19, and you see the evidence of all these translations. I want you to see the proof, and you can study it at, at home. But all three of those pages are covering different translations where they change the book of life to the tree of life that's totally wrong. No comparison whatsoever. Amen? And uh, uh, 
Amen, bro. And uh, I figure if they don't know the difference of that, how can you trust them to translate God's Word right, you know? <laughs> and so we look at... Um, um, also, let's look at the comparison of translation on two extra sheets. Acts 8 is your next pickup sheet. And uh, uh, in Acts 8, 37, it's about Philip uh, witnessing to the Ethiopian and in the chariot and everything. And, uh, uh, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest and be answered. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The New King James Version, the Living Bible, and the Amplified were together close enough of no dispute. But all these other translations that I've uh, got report of uh, in comparison left it out. The NIV, the Revised Standard Version, the New English Bible, the Phillips Modern English Bible, Jerusalem Catholic Bible, the ESV, and the New American Bible Catholic. Okay? Amen. And, uh, all right, looking at the next of Xerox translation Bible differences, uh, King James verse, Acts 9, 6, where Paul was on the road to Damascus and the Lord blinded him by a great light. And, uh, and he trembling and stunned said, Lord, what will thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the New King James Version amplified, uh, agree in reading, uh, similarity close enough with no dispute. But these other Bibles left out what Paul said, what will thou have me do? Which is obedience and humbleness and repentance to God to obey. Amen? And the Living Bible left it out, and the Revised Standard Version left it out, the New English Bible left it out, Phillips Modern English left it out, Jerusalem Bible Catholic left it out, the New American Standard left it out, the NIV left it out, the ESV left it out, and the New American Bible Catholic left it out. Okay. Now then, as we go on to read here, um, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, you know, Jesus... Uh, uh, told all the disciples and followers to go into all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, is representing the Trinity of God. Amen? And uh, uh, Matthew 10, 32, confess me before man, or I won't confess you before the Father, and uh, uh, be witnesses of God, and be not ashamed, prepare to meet thy God. You must be born again. This is run out, coming of the Lord, and rapture is nearer than you know. And... Uh, um, Let's look at uh, uh, 1 John and turn with me. And we're going to read 4 through 15. 1 John 5, 4 through 15. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Yep. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree Agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believed on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. But 
one thing I want to back you up is uh, Trinity was mentioned uh, in uh, uh, Matthew 28, 19-20, uh, here in 1 John 5, 7 and 8, uh, where, where it, it mentions, uh, uh, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Uh, you, you go, the New King James Version and the Amplified were similar enough of no dispute. Um, Isaiah 9 6, all the translations that I got copies of go along with it well. Uh, Cornelius in Acts 10 44 to 48 and getting saved and won to the Lord. They read pretty similar enough of no dispute. But uh, the King James Version compared above to other Bible translations, the ESV, the RSV, the NIV, the New American Standard, New English Bible, Phillips Modern English Bible, New uh, uh, Jerusalem Catholic Bible, and New American Bible Catholic, they don't mention the Trinity in uh, 1 John 5, 7 of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They used the verse before it uh, and split it in half and they put, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. They put that in for their seventh verse. And they left out the Trinity. You see that? So, uh, anyway, uh, you can look at your next Xerox sheet and 1 John 5, 6, 7 change Father, Word, and Spirit to Spirit testifies Spirit is true. And you can look at that and I should have Xeroxed more of my uh, larger book of all the translations showing they really done that. I was hoping you'd just set my word in. I didn't, I didn't take time to copy all this, okay? And uh, the books of the Bible left out of King James version and other Bible translations as you read in the uh, uh, book of uh, Second Chronicles mostly, uh, the book of Jehu, Second Chronicles 20-34, book of uh, Kings of Judah and Israel, which is really the book of First Second Kings, I'd say, uh, that you reference in Second Chronicles 16-11, Second Chronicles 35-27, they'll repeat through the book readings. There's a book of Nathan the prophet that's not in there, Second Chronicles 9.29. A book of Shemaiah the prophet, Second Chronicles 12.15 you read. Book of Adu the seer, Second Chronicles 12.15. The book of story of Adu, the prophecy, Second Chronicles 13.22. The law of the book of Moses, it's got to be the five books of uh, 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 Old Testament, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers and Leviticus and Deuteronomy, amen? And uh, that you find the book of law of the Lord is Old Testament writings up to that date that they're speaking of, uh, that they refer back to. The book of Jazer, uh, you read about uh, here in reference, and we ain't got it, Joshua 10, 13. The book of Gad the Seer, 1 Chronicles 29, 29. The uh, book of Kings of Ezra, again, is 1 Kings, 2 Kings, should be Second Chronicles 33:18 as a reference, but Book of Moses again uh, is the first five books of Old Testament. Now you read about the Book of Laodiceans, Colossians 4:16. That's not in our Bible, and there's a book called Jasper. I read New Testament somewhere, but I forgot to note where I read it at. So uh, maybe if you come across it reading, you take note yourself. Um, Okay, um, your last Xerox here I want you to look at that's uh, really shocking. And uh, 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 Strong's Concordance of Bible references using number codes of false doctrine teaching that they got in this Strong's Concordance. And it's the only concordance I know of that uses this number system. And... What is shocking about it ain't good. Example, Genesis 3.13, Eve said, The serpent beguiled me.
the Gaul in Strong's Concordance reference number 5377 by it in rear book of definition meaning seduce. And what they're teaching a lot of these colleges uh, and even where I went in Pensacola, Florida, uh, uh, which many are in the ministry schools and TV ministry, the cable, there's a good shepherd on cable, 24-hour ministry that's messed up with false doctrine of all kinds. Don't ever listen to it. Warm people don't listen to it. And uh, uh, you should not listen to it. They are all teaching instead of Adam and Eve eating of a tree they had sex with Satan and Cain as their son. This number system is teaching a lot of false doctrine to people. My brother in Pennsylvania, he suffered greatly from listening to all this, and I can't reach him still to this day about a lot of the doctrine that he swallowed. And uh, I pray God will wake him up real soon. And uh, uh, I left Pensacola, Florida under Peter S. Rubman that many of you might even know of uh, that came up here trying to stir up uh, students and everything. But this guy teaches a lot of truth and he can teach a lot of false doctrine. And to me, I'd rather read my Bible and pray and let the Lord teach me, amen? And a lot of these Bibles with references by the verses, I tell people, just read your Bible and pray yeah. Yeah. and let the Holy Spirit yeah. Yeah. lead you in memory and reference where you read something similar to back it up. Make your own reference notes. And to me, you are safer and not led astray. A lot of these cheap Bible publishers, they'll put all kinds of references in there and they call it chasing rabbits. You start going after their one verse and reference, and then they'll give you another one, and after a while, you done forgot where you started. You feel what I mean? You don't need that garbage. You need to keep your mind on Christ and the Word of God and let, let yourself grow and mature in Christ Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit lead and grow you. Amen? And, uh, uh, you know, your Webster's Dictionary, beguiled in the dictionary means deceived, de defrauded, betrayed, deluded. Amen? And uh, I want to take you to something else that's going on in these ministry schools. And I've ran into preachers that go along with that stuff, and it, it, it's sad. It's really sad. Uh, I know I don't believe it and go along with it. And you look at uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, and God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over he... Uh, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creep upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. Created he him, male and female, created he them. And people are taking these readings in the first chapter of Genesis and comparing to chapter 2 where uh, the Lord made Adam from the dust of the earth and then Eve from his real. And they want to say, there's other people on the earth before the Lord made Adam and Eve. Two different sets of people, and it's all hogwash. And I want you to look at these verses here, 2 of defense, 2-7. Uh, uh, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And you look at the 18th verse, and the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. And you skip on over to 21 through 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall man leave his father and mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. Now then, I want you to skip on over to the 20th verse of chapter 3. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So all living people started with Adam and Eve 
and there wasn't another group of people before Adam and Eve. And people will swallow false doctrine and teaching and just like the tree of knowledge and they want to think uh, Adam and Eve had relationship with Satan sexually, well, it's speaking of trees, if they're going to call the tree of knowledge of good and evil Satan, what are they going to call the tree of life? Jesus Christ, that they're having relationship with him sexually too. I mean, people are ungodly today, twisting God's word and teaching all this false doctrine and teaching. And uh, I was down there in that school, and uh, uh, they, they, they was teaching, they believe all black people are of the devil and can't be saved. And uh, uh, they go along this stuff here uh, in Genesis as a shared way. And uh, uh, I even read a tape that uh, uh, Peter S. Ruffman had on flying saucers. And I thought, what in the world has he got here? And I, I listened to that thing, and he said he'd saw one at the Bermuda Triangle area. And he, he was teaching in there that he thought the Antichrist would come back in a flying saucer. And there's so much garbage going on that it ain't funny. And I tell you, I couldn't wait to get out of there. I, I listened so much of it, and uh, I started cutting classes, and uh, I quit. And I, I come back home, and uh, I told my pastor, you can believe this or not, I was a member at an independent Baptist church in LaRue County, Hodgeville, Kentucky, and we called a pastor from down there, and that man followed this. Peter S. Rubman had all his books. That guy was a maintenance man. This man was very shocking to listen to. This man had memorization of the whole New Testament and had a big start on the old. He was an enormous memory man. But he led the church on while I was in school and started that false doctrine and split that church wide open. And it shows you can't trust nobody. The Lord put him in a wheelchair later on. And uh, I tell you, the Lord knows how to bring people down. Amen. And uh, I tell you, you better weigh people out by the word of God. And if it don't correspond, it's time to pack your bag and leave. There's another church down the road. Amen. And... Uh, 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 it, it's really a sad situation today, and uh, uh, I want to look at something else here. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, here. Uh, I, I, I later. Uh, you know, I, I was running from God and I started drinking. I didn't care where I died tomorrow. After, uh, I mean, I couldn't study my Bible for thinking about all this false doctrine teaching, you know. And I just wanted to die. I felt like uh, 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 Judas betraying Christ or something. You know, I thought, I went to the wrong school. How could God use me? And I just felt like a total failure. And I started drinking. I fell asleep behind the wheel drove off in a deep ditch, had to get a record to pull me out. So I got prayed up, straightened up, because I knew God could take me out, you know. And I got back to church under my dad's uh, church preaching, and uh, he, uh, uh, after about six months, he asked me uh, if I'd preach, and it's like saying no to God. And uh, so I agreed to do it, and uh, I couldn't accept myself still. And uh, I left there and went visiting other churches. I worked in this welding shop, I, uh, two men, great big guys, couldn't keep up the material list for four layout men and their helpers, and they put me on it, and I'm a little guy, and I could keep it up, and they even added uh, two more layout men and their helpers, and I was keeping it all up. I was a, I'm an old country farm boy and hard working, and I ain't lazy, I'll guarantee you, and I'm stouter than I look, and, or was, I ain't now. But anyway, uh, uh, the Lord allowed a big load of expanded metal, 600 pounds, to break off of an overhead crane. And 
fall across me like a giant slinky toy and crush me to the floor. I didn't even think I was hurt. I thought, well, I'll just raise this up and slide out from under. It's like a boat of electricity went through me. I knew I was hurt. And so I hollered for help. And then I felt the presence of God and heard his voice. And he said, you ready to do it my way? And I said, yea, Lord. Give me back my back and I'll preach for you. And I was in the hospital 29 days, paralyzed, waist down. All my lumbars were crushed. And they had to put a tubular a cylinder around my nervous system, reset all the lumbars and casting. And I was praying up before surgery and uh, the Lord took care of it. I was ready to die and go on to heaven. I said, it's in your hands, Lord, whatever you decide. And uh, I've never had another surgery on my back. Amen. That's how good God is. I returned to that welding job, shop and got laid off. And uh, I got on with other welding shops. And other jobs of drafting and everything like that, I retrained that, but being laid off fighting pornography and evil supervision and wrongdoing, I ended up without work and growing up on the farm, as you know it, tobacco business is their way of living, and I hired out 16 acres of tobacco cutting to meet bills, and nobody could keep up with me. That's what God can do. I tell you, I ain't a lazy man. I wear a waist wrap and everything of support. And uh, no kidding, I, I got backbone. I ain't going to sit down uh, and do nothing. Uh, a lot of people just look for an excuse to do nothing. Amen? And we owe God more than that, witnessing for Him, living for Him. Amen? And uh, so uh, I, I wanted to encourage uh, people uh, in this behalf, too, of... Uh, 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 I married a woman that was singing in revivals and everything, and she'd uh, had an aneurysm and uh, lived through it and uh, said she died and went to heaven and the Lord brought her back and everything. And a lot of churches and preachers thought she is okay and everything. And, uh, and she called me up wanting to meet me, and uh, so I thought, well, we'll go out and eat together. And so uh, uh, just... Uh, Story short, I ended up uh, asking her to marry, and we married, and as soon as the honeymoon was over, she went to church with me, back to me, and preaching, and nursing home preaching, and and she said, well, I ain't going back to the ministry. I want you to hold down a, a regular job. Uh, uh, we'll starve to death, you know. So I just turned it over to the Lord. It's like a knife in the gut, just like the school was, and I put it in God's hands, and I, I signed up for visitation everywhere that uh, I, I was in church. And, and she'd only go to a Southern Baptist church. And uh, so uh, the Lord blessed me in witnessing and uh, moving different churches and uh, visitation field, winning souls out in the field. I've done visitation for six churches in Root County, three in Hardin, six in Bullet and one in Jefferson, which is Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. And I've never been sorry. I've been on the visitation field since high school. My dad introduced it to me, and the Lord has always convicted me with hunger. I tell people, hand out tracts, trick tracts. Church has got plenty. Every place you're shopping. Uh, I got uh, turned loose the jobs, hand them out in break time and lunch, fighting for Narva and evil wrongdoing. And uh, I tell you, I ain't sorry, but I warn people who got their children and families worry about. Uh, they don't have to do what I've done, but I wasn't about to let that first marriage wife stop me from witnessing and sharing the gospel with people. And I didn't care if she divorced me or whatever. I didn't care. And anyway, uh, uh, I, I tell people, don't hand out tracts at work, just verbally witness. But everywhere you're shopping, uh, uh, hand out tracts in uh, Walmart and Kroger and, and uh, uh, hospitals, nursing homes, uh, gas stations, post office, funeral homes, Jefferson Mall, and uh, uh, family, neighbors, uh, doctor's offices, anywhere you're at doing business, offer somebody a tract. It, it'll come natural to you and the blessing of God upon you. 
just like eating a meal. Amen. You'll hunger to share the love of God with people. The Lord will bless you. He'll run your cup over. Just give it a chance. I guarantee you, the Lord will bless you dearly. And uh, uh, another thing I wanted to share, uh, too, is, uh, you know, in witnessing, God don't hold us accountable to quote that Bible 100%. Just do the best you can, your own words. And that's the way I like to look at translation Bibles. It's more like a testimony of people and not the real Bible, but it's better they read that as nothing, you know? How many people got King James Bibles and they won't even read them? People just setting them up, the dust on them, and they won't read their Bible, and uh, then they wonder why everything's going wrong. Uh, you got to draw and lean on God, pray and read the Bible to receive wisdom, knowledge, and understand, and pray for it. Amen? And healing, peace of mind, and all these things. And uh, uh, Billy Graham, I've heard him preach many times. He said once he had 43 different translation Bibles. And there's no telling how many more after his day, you know. And... Uh, uh, one thing uh, I, I noticed in Billy Graham, like uh, be, you must be born again, he would uh, refer to the Catholic Bible and some of these other translations with the wording, be born from above, which you can interpret and accept and not a big fuss. But another thing I never did like, I loved his preaching, but I never did like his altar call. He... Like Matthew 10, 32, confess me before man or I won't confess you before the Father. All the other translations want to use, acknowledge him publicly. You see what I mean? Maybe a few words before or after. But, and what I want to say is, that's reference of confessing. You don't confess God before you get saved. You see what I mean? Uh, you tell them that after they get saved, you know? Uh, come up for prayer and repentance and get saved and then go confess or acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. And so a lot of people, a lot of these big name preachers, they're praying over people and follow me in prayer and if you said that, you're saved. Uh -oh. and, and then they go join a church with that testimony. Yeah. Uh, trusting them as a big name preacher, and nobody else's prayer can save you. Uh, Matthew uh, fifteen eight it is that I've quoted many times. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Uh, they should always say in leading somebody in prayer, this is an example prayer. You should pray your own prayer now between you and God. Amen. It's serious business. You must be born again. Works and my knowledge will not save you. You must have a true spiritual experience with God, knowing He convicted you and led you through repentance prayer and know the Lord saved your soul and put His Word and Spirit in your heart to lead God to all truth. And you know He's with you every day, correcting you like a parent. And that's why we repent and pray every day to stay in His will and obedience. Amen? And uh, uh, another thing uh, I'll share, uh, uh, y'all might not uh, want to agree with me here, but uh, I've listened to Jimmy Swagger back in the 80s uh, with his uh, uh, ministries and everything, uh, traveling, uh, crusades and stuff. And you take all this stuff with the government and selling us out and doing wrong and taking prayer and ministry out of the schools, okay, and abortion, homosexuality, and all this stuff, and, and the uh, school teachers brainwashing the kids. He was on those subjects and that they need to correct all this stuff. And I've always thought, uh, and he defended the King James Bible too, and if Billy Graham had 
backed him and what he is doing, maybe our nation would have sat up and listened. But I think Billy Graham wanted more glory and acceptance of everybody instead of standing on truth further for the concern of our nation and people. And glory don't help nobody. Amen? And uh, uh, another thing I liked about Jimmy Swagger because there's so many uh, ministry schools of false doctrine, he uh, rewrote the Bible with up-to-date English uh, words, uh, correct spelling, best he could, and then he put in parentheses what he thought each verse meant. Well, he, he took up donations of people to donate to different countries and languages of people that were called to preach and teach the Word, and they couldn't afford to go to school or anything. And so as people donated, he, he challenged in uh, uh, the same number of balance and match to send to other countries and languages to help them in the ministry, which uh, I thought was good of him, where people ain't got nothing else. They can't afford to got to try on their own, and maybe they can't even half read, you know. Sure. But uh, I, I'm just saying like uh, uh, Franklin Graham with Samaritan Purse helps in tornadoes, hurricanes, and uh, forest fires, and floods, and everything. Uh, 700 Club CBN, they have... Uh, uh, Operation Blessing that does similarity of things. Uh, there's ministries, Feed America, Feed the Children, Christian Appalachia, uh, St. Jude, uh, uh, Love Shriners, Mercy Ships, Smiley Train Ships, uh, doing surgery on people that can't afford surgery, deformed bodies and everything. And there's ministries leeching the alcoholics and drug addicts to get off of them and military, police, and farming of disabilities, great abilities of, of burnt scars and blindness, uh, paralyzed, limbless, uh, reaching them with the gospel and, and aid and everything. And all we can do is pray the government will try to help the same way. But there's uh, so many things that we as children of God should be prayer warriors about to uh, pray that revival come to all these denominations and children of God to be prayer warriors and witnesses of the gospel to the cities and state of our nation and uh, wake up these political parties of Democrat, Republicans, and liberals and independents to vote this Democrat party out of existence. It ought to be annulled because of treason and traitorism to our Constitution flag and Christian freedom. And if they don't wake up and do something about it, it's going to be too late. Amen. And we need to be praying for our soldiers, military of all branches, our doctors, nurses, dentists, firemen, ambulance workers, policemen, state troopers, SWAT team, barber, dentists, all uh, people trying to help people of all trades, uh, blind, paralyzed, limbless, uh, starving, hungry, homeless, uh, the blind, paralyzed, limbless, deformed, diseased, ailments of all kinds to come to the Lord for healing and salvation. There's so much to pray about. Yeah, we uh, we got to quit just thinking of self only and pray for others and uh, their healing just like Sue Davis. She needs our prayers and others of the church. And uh, uh, we need to remember everybody we can in prayer and uh, uh, pray for all these domination of the gospel, death, burial, and resurrection to revival come to them and work together and replace some of these so-called ministers that are just preaching for a living and there was called uh, by mind and works uh, and uh, pray that our nation will get back together and get on the right road before it's too late. Uh, only God can change hearts and minds. We can't change nobody. But if we keep praying laying on God, we may see it come to pass but we may be closer to the rapture than we know, yeah. and we may have to accept things as they are and lean on Jesus all we can That's to right. get through it till He takes us home to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And uh, uh, I just felt uh, concerned to share all that, and uh, 
you can agree with me or not. Uh, everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody's opinion's important. Every voice is important. We all need to witness for the Lord. Every chance we get, because time is running out. Amen. Something's going to happen, seriously. I'm not sure what. But God be with you all. And uh, God bless uh, this tonight. I pray it'll help somebody. And uh, uh, let's go, Lord, prayer. Heaven, Father, Lord Jesus, King, King, Lord.